going guys, it's Aaron from Minnesota Pro Paintball here. What we have for you today is a little review, uh, preview of the new Planet Eclipse E-Tech 5 mid-range marker. Um, this is actually a pre-production model that Planet Eclipse was nice enough to send to us to do kind of a review on and put some content up, content up so you guys can see what these guns are all about and kind of have some more information about them when they finally do drop. So we are definitely thankful for that. Uh, Jack Wood, Heather Landry, everybody at Planet Eclipse for making this happen for us. Um, so what we're going to do for you guys is kind of do the same thing that we always do. We're going to unbox it, show you everything that you get with the gun, do a little bit of an overview. Um, the park is closed, but we did manage to get an efficiency test in in our sweet shooting range that we have in the store here. And we'll do a little bit of a teardown on it so you'll be able to see everything that's in the gun and what makes it a little bit different from the previous e -tips. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is unbox the gun for you guys. First thing you're going to notice, obviously, it comes in the same uh, rigid outer shell, uh, soft padded case that all the Planet Eclipse guns come with. Uh, the outside is very rigid. It's going to protect the gun from any damage. And then inside, there is the purpose-cut foam that's going to keep everything nice and protected from getting slammed around, dinged up, whatever it may be, traveling to the field, flying to the vents, whatever you guys might be doing. Um, so first thing you're obviously going to see is the gun itself. Uh, the nice full Allen key set that you always get with every Planet Eclipse gun. A uh, little tube of oil. Um, ours did come with the optional OLED upgrade. Uh, we ha already have that installed in the marker itself. Um, again, that will not come with the gun from the factory, but they will be available the day that the E-Tech 5s are commercially available for customers to pick them up. Uh, and then, of course, you have the spares baggie here with basically anything you need to service the gun multiple times over. Uh, most of the people that buy Planet Eclipse guns from us almost never go through the entire set of spares just because they do give you so many and the guns are so reliable. Um, the next top of the case, uh, you have, of course, the two-piece Shaft 4 barrel, uh, 14 and a half inches in total length with a 693 back. Uh, honestly, I would recommend getting a smaller bore back personally, uh, but in the Midwest, at least in Minnesota anyways, the paint does run a lot smaller, so 693 is just not that sensible. Um, but that is personal preference, so you guys can use it if you like. If you don't want to spend the extra money on a better barrel, uh, it's always up to the user. Uh, you of course have the barrel bag, and then the full color manual. Um, honestly, in my opinion, Planet Eclipse probably is one of the best manuals in the game. Um, it's a much bigger manual than it used to be. It's full color, and it uses actual product shots of the gun, so it's much easier to reference You know anything that you need to know about the gun at a glance without having to try to figure out, you know, is this the same thing as what I'm looking at in the rendering or whatever it may be. It's just nice when you're at the field to be able to look at it at a glance and figure out, yep, this is what I need to do, this is what I need to fix, and this is what's going to fix my issue. So, now that we've done that, we will take a more detailed look at the gun and kind of go over some of the finer points, the things they've changed from the E-Tech 4 to the E-Tech 5. So getting into the gun itself, obviously the first thing most people are going to notice is that it does have grips similar to the LV-1 and the 3.5. Uh, the big difference here is that these are dual textured grips. Uh, so there is you know, the smoother rubber and there's also the, the kind of texturized portion of it. So that gives you the grip. Uh, and actually it works surprisingly well, especially if you have you know, that oily paint residue on your hands from some paint. Um, the, grip, the gun's not going to go anywhere in your hand. It's going to still give you a good sense of grip and a good sense of texture so you'll still be able to keep a firm hand on the gun so you won't be dropping it when you're bumping your next bunker or running through the woods or whatever it may be. Um, the big difference here though is that this piece is now one piece in, instead of two. So there's not going to be any twisting going on here. You're not going to worry about breaking any tabs off or anything like that. Um, it does have a lot of styling cues from the LV-1. It's got an extended tail here. Um, it does have the same kind of front portion here with the the valve cap. Um, it does not have the lever valve that the LV-1 has, unfortunately. It does have the traditional uh, poppet style and ram, but it does shoot very well. It's got a much larger valve chamber, which results in a much softer shot. So this new E-Tech 5 actually shoots very similarly, if not better than uh, darted Ego 11, which was the previous flagship Ego for many years for Planet Eclipse. Um, the, the gun itself is great. Honestly, I think it, it feels really good in the hands. Um, one thing I did notice with the frame, um, which is, again, uh, it's a GRN, which is a glass reinforced nylon. The frame, the eye covers, the feed neck, and the ASA knob are all that GRN material. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's not metal, it's not reliable. Uh, it's the same thing they build Glocks out of. If it wasn't reliable and it wasn't durable, they wouldn't build Glocks out of it. Um, so it's definitely going to last. You're going to be able to beat it up. I've never seen anybody break one of these frames before. So I'm pretty sure it can handle the abuse if they've lasted this long and it's something Planet decided to go with because they definitely do their research before they make these guns. 
Um, the frame itself has a lot more contouring now, so it fits better in your hand, uh, almost similar to what the ultralight frames on the DMs have been for years. Um, it feels comfortable in the hands. It's not just the straight back, uh, similar to what the E-Tech 4 was. So it definitely feels better in the hands. It definitely contours you know, the overall grip of the gun much, much better, so it's a much more comfortable gun to play with and hold. Um, again, same, same similar grips, so it does feel comfortable in your hands. Uh, it does have the integrated oops on off, uh, which is a great ASA, works well. Um, the console on the back of the gun is very nice. Uh, it doesn't have the three button system that the Ego and the Geo have, but it does work well. It's a single button. Um, again, we do have the OLED on this one that we already pre-installed. We did take out the little placehold placard in there, um, which is kind of cool. On the back of it, there's actually a QR code you can scan with your phone that takes you to the eTech 5 site on Planet Eclipse's website and lets you order the OLED should you not decide to get it and want it down the road. Uh, new for the E-Tech 5 is the Cure 5 bolt. Uh, it looks similar to the one that's in the LV-1 and also does have a soft face so it should be able to handle any paint that you can throw at it. And the nice thing I like about this new RAM cap is that it is toolless. Uh, it's got two grooves on it so it's very easy to grab with just your hand without needing to use an Allen key to get it out. And if you look at the rammer, um, it does say E-Tech on it, but uh, it looks very reminiscent of the heavy rammer that comes in the LB-1, uh, which again, I think helps aid in that smooth shot that you get when this marker is cycling. And then you just shove the ram back in there, nice and easy. Again, you don't need to use a tool if you want to, you definitely can, but I mean, why mark up the gun if you don't need to? Uh, the bolt slides in nice and easy, just as always. Very minimal maintenance, as with any Ego-style platform gun, um, you know, once in a while. Lube the rammer. Uh, some people choose to lube the bolt. I personally do not. Uh, and then, you know, every couple times you service the ram and everything, do the reg. Uh, the reg on the E-Tech 4 is the SL4, which is the same as on the LV-1. Uh, the housing and everything is almost identical to what's on the LV-1. Obviously, the only difference is the collar for the macro line as opposed to the AT pipe on the LV-1. But, I mean, you can tell that a lot of the ergonomics are the same as they are on the LV-1. Um, again, the only difference here really being the, the pops and the AT pipe. Um, we will do a weight comparison on the gun here for you guys too, so you can kind of see what the differences are between the E-Tech 4, E-Tech 5, Ego 11, and LV-1, as well as doing the efficiency test. And as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call, 952-303-5807. Shoot us an email at info at mmpropaintball.com or just stop into our store. So now we're going to weigh the guns for you guys and then after that we'll take the gun into the shooting range and do an efficiency test. Okay, so like I said, uh, we have the optional OLED installed in the gun already. So what we're going to do is kind of show you guys what it looks like. Um, it actually is a very, very nice, robust, bright, easy to read OLED display. Uh, so first thing we'll do is go into programming mode. To do that, you hold the trigger down and turn it on. You see it says set up there, and then we currently have it set to PSP, and then to cycle through, you just use the trigger, and then to alter a parameter, you tap the power button, and then you just cycle through using the trigger, and then to set the parameter, just hit the power button again. And again, you can just cycle all the way through the menus. Um, you don't have nearly the adjustability that you do with like the Ego or the Geo line, but again, uh, it is a mid-range gun, so you don't want to be able to tweak too much, um, but it is easy to set up on the fly. And then if you just hold the power button for a second there, it'll actually jump into live mode, so the gun is ready to use. Um, so, as you can see here, you have your battery indicator, your rate of fire indicator, your firing mode indicator, your total shots, uh, which ours does have a software glitch, um, saying that we have 8 million shots on the gun. Clearly we don't, because we haven't had it nearly long enough to do that. Uh, the gun is unlocked right now, and then of course your eye indicator right there. And then, as with always with the E-Tex, uh, it's blinking yellow because the eyes are on. Shut the eyes off, just hold it till it turns purple, and then you can shoot it. And then just shut the gun off. Same with every gun, you just hold it until you see the goodbye screen. And that's it. Okay, so now we're going to weigh the guns for you guys. Uh, we are going to weigh them with their respective barrels on there, so you get an overall feel for what the gun weighs uh, with everything but a loader and a tank and paint. Um, so, first we'll do the E-Tech 5, which weighs in at 2 pounds 4 ounces. 
Next we'll do the ETEC 4, uh, this is the LT version. Which is just over 2 pounds 2 ounces. Next we'll do the Ego 11. Which is just shy of 2 pounds. And lastly, the LV1. Which is just over 2 pounds 1 ounce. So, pretty close to the other guns before it. Um, obviously, it is a little bit heavier uh, just because it's a little bit beefier body with not being, you know, the quote unquote high end model. But it is an overall great gun. Um, don't let that stop you from buying it, guys. The price on point on these is $550. Uh, the OLED itself is going to be, I believe, $80, which is a very easy drop in upgrade. We do have a full breakdown of the gun over on PB Nation. Uh, we'll put the link to that in the description below. Well, a full breakdown of the gun, pictures of everything you get, and a nice little write-up kind of depicting everything that we don't cover in the video. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, never hesitate to ask. Uh, so the last thing we're going to do is head into the shooting range with this guy, air it up, and see how much paint we can get out of it. Yeah. Alright guys, we're going to do the efficiency test on the E-Tech 5 here. Uh, we are close for the year at the park, so we have, are lucky enough to have a shooting range in the store, so we're going to do it in here. Obviously, it's not going to give you a very good shot out the sound, uh, but we can't see how much paint we can get out of the tank, so what we're going to use is a 68 SL with a Pro V2 with the low pressure output, so we have all the shims out. And we are using the stock barrel, which is a 693, like we said earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to load it up and see how much paint we can get and start with an empty loader. And I have Hobbs from PB Nation here to be my lovely paint assistant. So let's get to it. So we started with 13 pods, we've got two left, and three left, and one loaded. Uh, so looks like we've got about nine pods uh, on a full 68. Uh, we were at about 4100 PSI, we didn't have a full 4500 fill, so we probably could have squeezed a 10th pod in there, but it's not too bad if that 693 stopped back. So it's pretty impressive for a mid-range gun, uh, which again, didn't have the best uh, paint to bore match, but it's a good gun, uh, it's something you can rely on. So thanks for watching.